Part 1, A Sphere, and Its Twelve Neighbors Let's start by stating a well-known fact, a sphere, can be completely surrounded by exactly twelve others identical spheres, in only one way. To better see how this works, it is beneficial to consider lines radiating from the central sphere, along these twelve directions. There are other geometrical solids, that can be used to understand the pattern of these twelve directions. The best one, available in our universe, is the rhombic dodecahedron. Other shapes which obey this pattern, can also be used to visualize these directions. For example, let's look to the cube octahedron first. The cube, the truncated cube, and few other solid shapes, also have this symmetry pattern. Why use spheres? The sphere, stands out as the most beautiful object around. The sphere's shape presents no corners, no angles, and no geometrical features. Its very shapelessness enables us to explore the shape of space, matter and structures. By connecting the spheres with struts, along the directions imposed by close packing patterns, one ends up with platonic structures. It is important to observe that these structures, are expandable. Their sizes, and dimensions are determined only by the length of the struts. Their shapes are always preserved. This behavior is similar with natural growth and development, observed all around us. From a practical point of view, the rhombic dodecahedron is a better choice when building physical structures. Its twelve faces helps us better see the twelve directions in space. This is the node that is used to assemble platonic structures. Part 2. The Square Lattice Let's imagine that you are asked to fill up a room with ping-pong balls. Being a very organized guy, you start arranging the balls, on the floor, next to each other, such that each ball touches exactly four other balls. Each ball has exactly four neighbors in the plane. At first impression, the ping-pong balls, arranged in a square pattern, might not be look like the best arrangement possible. Looking closer, one can see that a ball, placed in a four-ball nest, on the second layer, sinks deep in the cluster. Once you have filled up the first plane, you move to the next plane. Now the ping-pong balls fit perfectly, in the nests, formed by the cluster of four balls from the first plane. The patterns of the two planes are identical. The second plane is translated, relative to the first plane. For the third plane, again, the location of the balls is determined by the nests, of the second plane. If you look carefully, you observe that the third plane, sits exactly above the first plane. Using the square pattern, each ping pong ball in the room, we'll end up having exactly 12 neighbors. When building platonic structures, the nodes are connected by rods. Then, the square pattern is seen even better. Note that the sides of the squares, are determined by the rods. From now on, let's call the rhombic dodecahedron node, the RHD node. The square pattern, follows naturally, when using RHD nodes, to build planes. Part 3. The Hexagonal Lattice When you ask your friend, to fill up her room with ping pong balls, you get surprised to notice that she, being a more artistic person than you are, is doing it in a totally different way. She starts arranging the ping pong balls, on the floor, in a hexagonal pattern. In her arrangement, each ball has exactly six other neighboring balls, which still fit perfectly, relative to each other. For the second layer, as we have seen with the square arrangement before, the balls are placed in the nests, formed by a cluster of three balls, from the first plane. In this case, the planes are closer packed, than in the square arrangement. But a ball 
placed in a nest formed by a cluster of three balls, does not sink as deep as a ball placed in a nest, of a cluster formed by four balls, as we have seen in the square arrangement. The third plane follows a similar arrangement, as the second plane did. As seen previously, in the square arrangement, again, each ball in the hexagonal arrangement, also has exactly 12 neighbors in space, 3 balls in the plane below, 6 balls in the central plane, and 3 balls in the plane above. A closer examination of the square and hexagonal arrangements, used by you and your friend, to fill up your rooms with ping pong balls, reveals that they are in fact one and the same arrangement. One can see that with a simple rotation, the first arrangement becomes the second arrangement. This way of packing spheres, to fill up the 3D space, is called the close packing of spheres. It has been proven, that if one is asked, to fit as many ping pong balls as possible, in a given space, this is the best arrangement possible. The laws of the universe, are such that, everything is done in the best way possible. This should be a good enough argument for us, to consider close packing of spheres, when explaining the nature of space, the composition of matter, or when attempting to design spatial structures. This principle is the foundation of the platonic structures. Beauty makes beautiful thing, beautiful. Part 4. Square Patterns Vertical Planes Periodicity As seen already, one way of generating the close packing of spheres arrangement, is to stack parallel square planes, on top of each other. For this to be possible, a translation is required between planes. The balls of any plane shall fit exactly in the nests, formed by the cluster of four balls, from the plane below. Every second plane is translated, relative to the original location. A simple periodicity emerges, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on. Planes 2, 4, 6, are identical when placed on top of each other. Planes 1, 3, 5, are also identical when placed on top of each other. It is important to note that a translation, along a direction of 45 degrees, separates the two types of planes. No rotation is needed, to transform one plane into another. Part 5. Hexagonal Patterns Vertical Planes Periodicity Starting from a plane with a hexagonal lattice pattern, one can stack a second plane, with a hexagonal lattice pattern, on top of the first plane. To obtain the best arrangement possible, one has to translate the second plane, along a direction that forms a 680 degrees clockwise angle, with the directions of the first plane. Once this is done, each sphere of the second plane, is in contact with exactly three spheres, from the first plane. In the same way, one can stack a third plane, on top of the second plane. The translation is done this time along a direction that forms a 680 degrees counterclockwise angle, with the directions of the first plane. By doing this, one can see again that any sphere, from the third plane, touches exactly three spheres, from the second plane. For the hexagonal arrangement case, of filling up the three-dimensional space, it can be seen that there is a periodicity of three for the patterns of the planes, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Another way of looking to this periodicity, is to observe the planes of a tetrahedron assembled from spheres. The planes, having a central sphere, obey the following pattern. Yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes. To see what's going on inside, we will use the tetrahedron, assembled as a platonic structure. This can now be expanded to see the spheres. The center of each plane, the red spheres, can be seen being present any third plane. Let's note and remember the difference periodicity for square and hexagonal patterns. 
we will see a similar behavior in many other structures. Part 6. Orthogonal Planes and Axes As seen already, one way of generating the close packing of spheres arrangement, is to stack parallel square lattice planes, with the required translation between planes. A relatively short investigation reveals two more directions, in the close packing of sphere arrangement, which holds stacks of parallel planes, with the same underlining square lattices. These three directions are mutually perpendicular on each other, forming a variation of the well-known planes, of the 3D Cartesian coordinate system. The process of defining a coordinate system, corresponding to the 3D Cartesian system, can be further developed with the introduction of three orthogonal axes. It is time to start thinking outside the proverbial box, or better said, outside the Cartesian box. Observe that these three axes are lines, but they are formed by a more complex pattern, which is still a line pattern. These set of planes are parallel with the three distinct planes that form a cube. The dedicated term used to express the relationships among the directions of these three planes, is orthogonal. These three planes are orthogonal. And, of course, the corresponding axes, defined by the intersection of these three planes, are also orthogonal. If we imagine the points of the 3D space, as infinitely small spheres, in a close packing arrangement, then the Cartesian coordinate system, does not tell the full story, of the characteristics, structure, and properties, of the physical space. As we will show later, other coordinate systems, and other investigating tools are needed, to complement the Cartesian system, if we want a more refined understanding of the physical space, and its structure. Part 7. Tetragonal Planes, and Axes. First, Let's start introducing an abbreviation. Let's call the close packing of spheres arrangement, the CPS arrangement. Now, a similar investigation of the CPS arrangement, as the one presented in the previous section, reveals that there are four more directions, in the close packing of spheres, which are defined by stacks of parallel planes. All these planes have an underlining hexagonal pattern. For consistency with the orthogonal planes, defined already, we will introduce a new term, to express the relationships among the directions of these four sets of planes. We will say that these four planes are, tetragonal, to each other. In this case, these four set of planes are parallel with the faces of a tetrahedron. As seen already, the intersections of the orthogonal planes, corresponding to the square pattern, form the Cartesian coordinate system of axes. A similar set of coordinate system of axes, can also be developed, for the set of four planes, based on the hexagonal lattice pattern. The intersections of these four planes form four, tetragonal, axes. Again, these axes are also lines, but they are formed by a different pattern than the pattern encountered in the orthogonal case. At this point we can imagine a more complete coordinate system. This system has seven different planes, three planes having an underlining square pattern, and four planes a hexagonal pattern. There are also seven axes, the first three are mutually orthogonal on each other, and the remaining four are mutually, tetragonal, on each other. We can conclude now, that every sphere, in the CPS arrangement, is the intersection of seven lines, or axes. The facts presented so far, regarding the close packing of spheres, are just the tip of the iceberg of patterns and facts, hidden in the CPS arrangement. In the next videos we'll continue our investigation into the treasures of CPS geometry.